the eighth Vajra point, emanated apparition. By what means then, it may be asked, can emptiness be realised? The empty, fundamental nature, which cannot be realised by mere intelligence, and is not just an approximate idea, is the ineffable and inconceivable nature of awareness. It manifests in the mind thanks to the presence of merit and the teacher's blessings. At the time of an empowerment or the introduction to the nature of one's mind through symbolic indication and auspicious causal links, one may have the recognition of bare and simple awareness, empty and luminous. Know that it arises through your merit and the teacher's timely, skillful means. The entry of the teacher's words into one's heart is like looking at a treasure placed in one's own hand. How then, it may be asked, is the truth of phenomena seen? When the fundamental nature is realised, all phenomena are seamlessly equal and yet vividly distinct, just like emanated apparitions. and a state of bare awareness that is pure and traceless arises as a perception in which there is no separation between outside and in. 
a state in which all discerning falls away. It manifests as a condition of evenness, spaciousness and all-pervading immensity. As Saraha has said, in front, behind, in all the ten directions, wherever I look, there, there it is. Today I, like the Buddha, have cut through delusion. I have no questions now for anyone. When samsara and nirvana subside in awareness, a blissful state of mind spontaneously appears. Samsara consists of discursive thoughts. When it is understood that these have no existence, even though they appear. In other words, when their empty nature is realized. Nirvana, the state beyond sorrow, automatically manifests. So it is that thoughts and appearances sink back into emptiness without leaving any trace. This is referred to as the stirring up of the experience of non-dual primordial wisdom. Within the space of mind, thoughts stir. Such movement is illusory. For all is all pervading primal wisdom.
the realization of empty, bare awareness is the vision of the ultimate truth. The expanse of emptiness. When this occurs, meditative experiences will arise on the basis of one's familiarization with this state. But as for the realization itself, there is no further progress to be made. For indeed, this is the vision of the state in which all phenomena are exhausted. It is as described in the Prajna Paramita. The vision of the actual ultimate can neither intensify nor diminish. For it is like space itself. Even if one were to set forth this realization, which derives from the power of blessing, to people who lack the requisite karmic fortune, they will only understand it in the most general way. It will not arise in the manner of a personal realization. A blazing lamp is visible to those who can see, but not to the blind, however much it is pointed out to them. In just the same way, even if the realization of the fortunate is demonstrated by every sign and method to those of lesser fortune, they will be able to have no more than an intellectual estimate of it. They will not have the same realization. For the latter is born from the supreme devotion to a teacher. The ultimate condition of the self-arisen Buddhas is something to be understood through faith itself. The light that blazes from the sun cannot be seen by those who have no eyes. Those without learning 
and also those who are learned, but who rely on the discursive intellect, are unable to gain realisation in this present life. Those who in their past lives were destitute of the riches of the perfect teachings and whose intelligence in their present existence is greatly handicapped. And those who are like parrots and take the tangle of their thoughts as true do not have the fortune to behold the luminosity of the mind's own nature. The former in their stupid meditation take their own ideas as the truth while the latter cling to mental analysis as an end in itself. As the great master Garab Doge has said, a view wherein one clings to ratiocination. What an affliction that must be. A meditation based on such a view. What misfortune that must be. The hope to gain some fruit from it. How deluded that must be. Even though primordial wisdom, self-cognizing, dwells at all times in oneself, it remains unrecognized. But in the very moment when the teacher points it out and it is seen directly, certainty is gained. Subsequently, this primal wisdom will manifest when the mind is left just as it is, without any alteration. At that time, even though the objects of the senses and one's own mental states are perceived, there is no clinging or fixation in relation to them. It is in that state that primordial wisdom is truly present. And when awareness, empty, luminous and all-pervading arises naturally, it is even clearer than before, a fact that is due to the kindness of one's sublime teacher. It is important that such experiences be traced to the lineage and to one's most excellent instructor.
as Saraha tells us, know that it's arisen through the fivefold blessing of the lineage. These blessings have arisen through the Reverend Teacher's power. When one practices Guru Yoga, one should pray to one's teacher for success in seeing everything as an emanation. Then, in the knowledge that both the mind and everything appearing to the mind are like emanated apparitions, one should remain in a state in which memories, thoughts and mental activity have no place. movements of thought, which are themselves like emanated apparitions, subside. They are not even regarded as emanated apparitions. This is a state of primordial wisdom, free of all movement divested of the duality of apprehended and apprehender. Even though appearing objects are perceived, no mental discernment occurs whereby such objects may be taken as something real. For this is a state free of apprehended an apprehender, designated in terms of object and subject. In limpid awareness, appearances are perceived without any conceptual fixation, as luminous and empty, just like emanated apparitions. As one remains in the state of recognizing lucid awareness in the manner of self-illumination, the body and the mind are in a state of bliss. Space-like luminosity is beheld beyond all conceptual extremes. At that time, since all things arise in the manner of emanated apparitions, one is automatically freed from the apprehension of them as truly existing phenomena. And the five poisons and every hope and fear cease to exist. So it is that even the apprehension of the phenomena of ground, path and result as antidotes to the belief in truly existing things 
comes naturally to a halt. Consequently, regarding the outer apprehended object and the inner apprehending subject, when the self of the person subsides, there is, in that very moment, no further clinging to the antidote as something to be implemented on the path. And thus the non-existence of the phenomenal self is automatically realised. Those who accomplish this are called bodhisattvas who have realised the absence of the two kinds of self. Practitioners who have such a realisation are free of every fetter, of every kind of grasping and deviation. Their minds are in a state of unbounded openness. When one has looked upon awareness, uncontrived and bare, then even though one meditates with the thought that actions, their fully ripened karmic effects, and so on, are all true and certain, one will not fall into the extreme of permanence. For groundless awareness is seen. Though one meditates on the understanding that everything in phenomenal existence is rootless, one does not fall into the extreme of nihilism. For one sees the luminosity of awareness. Although one may meditate in a dualistic manner on phenomena and the mind as being a measureless palace, deities and so forth, one will not fall into dualistic clinging because at that very moment one sees the non-dual nature of self-cognizing awareness. Although one meditates on emptiness endowed with supreme qualities, namely the Sugata Gaba, or the primordially present, spontaneous and unconditioned identity of oneself, one does not fall into clinging to self in the manner of the Atman, of the non-Buddhist extremes. 
And this is so because one sees the nature of self-cognizing awareness as great spontaneous presence that is empty yet luminous. And although one meditates on other things, such as the hallucinatory appearances of samsara, the veils that are to be purified, one falls into neither hope nor fear, because one sees that the nature of awareness is primordially unstained. Therein is nothing to remove, and there too, not the slightest thing to add. The perfect truth viewed perfectly and perfectly beheld is liberation. Even though in the practice of the generation stage one meditates on a deity with face, arms and so forth, one does not, when one is meditating, fall into conceptual fixation because one is actually seeing awareness, empty and luminous devoid of characteristics. And although one meditates on the subtle yogas of the perfection stage, whether these are endowed with visible form or, like space, are not so endowed, one does not fall into the extreme of emptiness. For one sees that all such forms are spontaneously present in the state of awareness that is never divested of its self-illuminating bare nature. For a practitioner, these are points of the highest importance. Once this level of realization has been gained, although yogis on this level appear in the form of embodied beings, they dwell nevertheless in traceless emptiness. Others may think that such practitioners have bodies but these are just a state of bare emptiness, no longer material bodies at all. And since such practitioners have stripped their minds to a state of naked, all-penetrating openness, thoughts vanish in the moment of their arising.
they subside spontaneously in a state beyond all reference. Self-illuminating and all-penetrating awareness in which there is no difference between past and future continuously manifests and whether such yogis are in meditation or have arisen from meditation it is all the same to them such practitioners are said to have realized the equality of the three times For the minds of such yogis, free as they are of all fixation, the continuity of ordered conduct is abandoned and they react to whatever occurs with complete spontaneity. They are like lunatics totally unpredictable in the way they act. This is the moment when the vast and space-like wisdom mind is actualized. With respect to the result, elusive appearances are not taken for real. When the deluded body and mind are brought to an end, the auspicious link is created for the manifestation of excellent qualities. Those whose main practice is the generation stage, where effort is demanded, take the gross channels and winds as their path. In the case of the perfection stage, where no effort is called for, certain practitioners take as their path the subtle yoga by means of which the thought-free state is engendered. This path does in fact require a little effort in the training. On the other hand, those of highest capacity, that is the practitioners of the great perfection, who have realized awareness and have mastery of it, use as their path the absence of all effort and deliberate action. By this means, through the effortless preservation of the state of awareness, the channels and winds are mastered and all their excellent qualities are rendered manifest.
This approach is like that of a powerful person who, without moving from their seat, naturally accomplishes all their objectives. In the same way, if awareness does not stray from its natural condition, the result will be that the winds in the channels and the practitioner's mind separate from each other and all thought processes easily subside. Then, as the practitioner does not move from the natural state of ultimate reality, the qualities of the refined channels and winds are spontaneously perfected without this being consciously sought. It is thus that the practitioners of all the common vehicles are like ministers and subjects who gain their objectives with effort. Whereas the practitioners of the extraordinary vehicle of the great perfection are like kings who spontaneously and effortlessly achieve their purposes. When awareness does not stir from its natural condition, both the mind and the winds, which are, so to speak, its steed, are mastered and their qualities become manifest. This happens in the following way. When the wind mind of the chakra of great bliss at the crown of the head is refined, thoughts of desire and attachment, which are the factors to be purified, dissolve into awareness, the ground of purification. It is then that the practitioner dwells in the expanse of bliss, in the greatly blissful, spontaneous samadhi that has the nature of uninterrupted ultimate reality, the result of purification. When the wind mind of the chakra of enjoyment at the throat is refined, thoughts of anger and aggression, the factors to be purified, dissolve into awareness, the ground of purification. Then, as a result of purification, the riches of concentration are spontaneously perfected. When the wind mind of the chakra of ultimate reality at the level of the heart is refined, the factor to be purified namely ignorance, dissolves into awareness, the ground of purification, and the result 
of purification, inconceivable luminosity, is spontaneously achieved. When the wind mind of the chakra of manifestation at the navel is refined, thoughts of pride, jealousy and so forth, which are the factors to be purified, dissolve into awareness, the ground of purification. And the result of purification the accomplishment of miraculous abilities, the power of emanation, and the four kinds of enlightened activity occurs. Through one's growing used to the view that is unspoiled by clinging, in other words, through recognition of the mind's nature, which is the agent of purification. The factors to be purified, namely, the various stains and defilements, dissolve into awareness itself. The ground of purification of all these factors. The result of this purification, the permanent state of awareness, is gained. And all qualities, in both the immediate and the ultimate term, become completely manifest. As it is said in the Tantra, the wish-fulfilling wheel of bliss, the position of the natural great perfection lies in leaving things alone within their natural state. This means to leave the mind unaltered as it is, in its primordial state of openness and freedom. The state of wisdom lies beyond the ordinary mind. Therein is found the exhaustion of extremes, of emptiness and true existence. All things in their multiplicity are there exhausted. Discursive thinking is no more. All attributes subside in their own place. And all spontaneous qualities, without the need for training, come naturally to perfection.
Thus the yogi graced with fortune, with no thoughts, with no intentions, accomplishes a supreme mandala, the highest ground of nature, perfect in itself. within the state of changeless great equality. May we behold the enlightened mind, unmoving, free of mental fabrication. Primordial wisdom, non-conceptual, self-arisen. May we thus achieve the non-abiding, pristine state. Luminosity, the chief of perfect qualities of stainless peace, arises like the sun within the sky's expanse. Let it drive away the dark of ignorance of both ourselves and others. And may this only eye of beings Reveal the land of liberation. This concludes a chapter that is like an emanated apparition, a commentary on the eighth Vajra point of finding rest in illusion, a teaching of the great perfection.